The Commander Lilith and the Fight for Sanctuary DLC was intended to act as a bridge from Borderlands 2 to 3, but after comparing the DLC experience to the Borderlands 3 content we saw, it left me asking more questions than it answered, and I feel like the games could have been bridged much better. The third installment is all about expanding the universe of Borderlands to further than ever before, showcasing new planets and parts of the galaxy rather than just solely focusing in on Pandora. After giving it another chance, I feel this would be where Battleborn, another Gearbox software game, could and should have come into play. I know what you're thinking, Battleborn was rubbish, it was a new IP and it flopped, dying out after a few days, assuming you remember it at all. However, I don't think it's actually that bad. The media focused on it as an Overwatch clone, with its hero based multiplayer aspect, which in all honesty is a little bit of a disservice. The story, albeit basic, is actually quite fun to play through with a friend. It presented a new cast of characters, exploring new abilities, and in effect, development wise, it did bridge the gap between Borderlands 2 and 3 with some of the new implementations. However, I think Battleborn should have just been a Borderlands game. Sure, Gearbox shouldn't just be a one trick pony, because let's be honest, in recent years they've pretty much just been a Borderlands machine, but in their big attempt to move away into a new IP, they basically just created a Borderlands fanfiction game. So really it's their own fault, I, and probably you if you played through the story, made these comparisons. Firstly, why would Gearbox Software, Battleborn, and the Borderlands franchise benefit from it being a Borderlands game? The game ended up selling rather poorly, falling shy of expectations and losing a lot of players after the beta. According to its game director, Randy Pitchford, it sold similarly to the first Borderlands, which was around 7.8 million. And sure, that was pretty good back in 2009 with a new IP that was taking some risks, but with Gearbox becoming a well-established AAA brand, Battleborn could have reached much greater heights under the Borderlands name. For instance, Borderlands 3 supposedly sold 5 million copies within its first 5 days, showcasing the growth of the series. Battleborn itself would have benefited largely too, having the extensive Borderlands lore as its foundation. It could have acted in a similar vein to the spin-off title of Tales from the Borderlands, in which the team can expand on the already existing canon or just go wild with their own stories. And sure, I know there are restrictions with doing a sequel, however, with what Gearbox gave us with Battleborn and with the Borderlands games already having a wacky tone with a bunch of magical abilities and digitally constructed things, having Battleborn as is isn't exactly pushing out of the Borderlands universe terribly far. Although the story within Battleborn isn't the most inspired, it does have a tight focus on a more linear dungeon raid vibe. Each level in Battleborn has you fighting through a base to get to the boss, whilst cutting out the open world fetch fat from Borderlands. This more streamlined experience means that Battleborn could have introduced the Borderlands series to some younger fans. I mean, I instantly felt like I was watching a Saturday morning cartoon version of the Borderlands games, censoring itself and using immature humour more often than not. It even has a little cartoon intro before you start every level. There are obvious parallels within the writing to Borderlands, but with a serious downplay of the crude profanity. Incidentally, this would allow all three aspects to grow further, with these new younger fans perhaps growing into the other Borderlands games as humour as they grow up a little, creating a cycle for new fans of the series. Now, how could Battleborn have implemented the Borderlands universe, expand the lore and create a fresh look at the Borderlands experience? Initially, the gameplay is already very similar at a basic level. Gearbox have taken the Borderlands skeleton and added a few more restrictions. You play as one of the 25 classes, each with their own unique abilities and gimmicks. Pretty much all of this could stay as is, because I feel like it should still stand on its own two feet, much like the Telltale game did with its own spin. But instead of leaning on the quick time event and narrative focused experience, our Borderlands spin off is going to lean into the boss rush dungeon raid subgenre, and lean in hard. Battleborn in its current state presents us with a nice variety of villains, being puppeteered by the big bad, Rendane, and I do think the game benefits from the more linear yet diverse levels to showcase a variety of set pieces. However, in each level I'd want to see three stages, everyone amping up the difficulty as you amass your power, levelling up. An outer, more sparsely populated open area, an inner base area, and the final section which has the most enemies and finishes with the big boss of the level. The weaker levels within Battleborn were certainly the ones focusing in on wave defence, with a boss at the end. Although it's still a mechanic that could be utilised, I feel we should have our Battleborn lean more towards the dungeon crawler raid style of gameplay. We'll be overwhelmed by these Thrall Grunts and Varelsi Skulks, pushing our way through with our teammates to the boss's lair. This influx of enemies would also relieve the boss from being required to be so spongy, as they have more minions at their disposal protecting them and taking the brunt of your attacks. The game already feels like a dumbed down version of Borderlands, which works well with the ambition of attracting younger audiences, but I would change the weight of some of the weapons, 
Borderlands 2 enhanced the gunplay in such a perfect way from the first game, that reducing the impact that the guns feel like they're having feels like a massive step back for the developers, and especially with the weapon variety in Battleborn, a more diverse weight system behind each weapon would enhance the gameplay drastically. You'll notice that there haven't been many big changes, that's because of how much DNA Battleborn already shares with Borderlands. I don't want it to simply be another take on the Borderlands universe, showcasing another side of the galaxy and expanding the canon which leads me to how it could share the same universe as Borderlands. Battleborn appears to try and build up its own universe for itself, but I feel with the type of gameplay it holds and the initial focus on PvP elements held it back narratively. Although crafting some unique worlds from the frosty world of Bliss to the soul-wrenching dark world of Tempest, we rarely see the levels truly come to life. No local populace, not really any unique wildlife making an appearance, perhaps even joining the fray. The Borderlands game felt a lot more alive. When you're in a firefight with some bandits, and all of a sudden an alpha skag comes in and chomps on one of their heads, livens up the game so much, so little things like this would enhance the experience. As for things already present, I noticed there are a fair few shared animations and sound effects from the Borderlands games, used for some of the characters and even enemies. I remember instantly thinking when I heard a specific enemy sneaking up on me, do I hear an EXP loader? I turned around and thought, is that a reskin EXP loader? The way they clunked around felt uncanny, which brings up the question, why aren't they the same? Hyperion was a massive corporation, they could have had some reach onto this specific planet or maybe Rendane's goons had hijacked them. As we know from 2 in the pre-sequel, the loaders can be reprogrammed. Speaking of things that feel very similar to something already present in Borderlands, the Varelsi, the true enemy within Battleborn. There's some sort of alien species that have tainted the universe with their darkness and have almost wiped out all of the light from the universe within Battleborn. But damn, if these things don't remind you of the aesthetic and overall movement of some of the Iridian from the Borderlands games, you'll need to get your eyes tested. I feel like these could have just been a subcategory of the Iridian race, specifically being controlled as a hive mind by the more mature variants like the conservator bosses. The grunts or skulks act like typical zombified version of the Varelsi, slow moving yet vicious up close and when in large groups. These could have been mass bred to amass an enormous army to conquer more territory, utilising the power from the vaults across the galaxy and recovering the Iridian to their former glory. This subplot could have been realised in Borderlands 3, showcasing the devastation that the hordes caused to certain local environments, similarly to how Mass Effect shows the damage caused by the Collectors. The climax of the story showcases our heroes stopping Rending from destroying the universe. This whole plot could have even stayed the same, putting the Borderlands game arcs into a little perspective of how crazy stuff goes on all around the galaxy, with more power-hungry lunatics trying to destroy the universe to start fresh, and not just take over a planet and eradicate the bandits. It showcases that as we, the player, explore more of the universe, we see that there are bigger threats out there and heroes are needed everywhere. As I said at the start of this video, Battleborn did impact Borderlands 3 in a massive way allowing some time away from the series and to experiment with the game engine a little bit. Borderlands 3 art director Scott Kessler stated, If we didn't make that game, Borderlands 3 wouldn't be as good as it is now. It made us think about things a little differently, allowing the team to reset their palette a little. Even with me believing that the aesthetic is a slightly more exotic Borderlands, they have experimented with some new ideas with their visuals and characters within the art design. Now, look at Borderlands 1 compared to 3 though. The change is noticeable, but it's still a relatively different visual style to Battleborn. However, the main Borderlands games are in essence stories told by Marcus Kincaid, whereas Battleborn could be a different storyteller's interpretation of another epic tale from another part of the galaxy. Pandora was the only world that we really knew anything major about before Borderlands 3. With an open galaxy to explore for vaults, Battleborn could have been set at the other side of said galaxy, and maybe even at a different time, so a shared canon could have been created, but also having Battleborn adding to the history and stretching the universe out from just Pandora. Thank you very much for watching my video on how Battleborn could have been improved vastly and been implemented as a Borderlands game. I think it had a lot of potential and it could have been a great bridging gap between Borderlands 2 and 3. Make sure to stay tuned and hit that bell because we have a lot more content coming up in the coming months. My name is Andrew or Stanley 111 make sure to drop a like, drop a comment and subscribe if you've not done so already and I'll see you on the next video. Bye bye